welcome back to Lauren Learns. This is my channel that I spend time on so that I can bring you some fun content about things that I'm learning all the time. Today, I want to talk about why rushing takes more time. April is shaping up to be a really full month for us. Both of my kids have their birthdays. My brother has a birthday. Uh, we love to celebrate Easter because we love some Jesus. We love us some Jesus. I tend to be kind of an impatient person like this video if you are also someone that struggles with impatience. I just like, I want things done right now. I want things done. Um, I'm, an, I'm an accomplisher. I like to accomplish tasks, get it checked off and move it on to the next thing. And that keeps me from living in the moment a lot of times. And, and I just, I'm always trying to think of ways I can slow down, think of ways that I can live a really healthy full life and get things done but also enjoy where God has me and enjoy just this this really specific moment that I'm in and take like you know take deep breaths in at that moment. <laughs> so these are the reasons why I think rushing takes more time. Number one is that you make more mistakes. When we're just kind of flying around and trying to get things done and thinking of a thousand things all at once, we're not as efficient. I also think something that's really important in life is being excellent at what you do and, and showing excellence and showing our families and our kids and people around us that like think excellent things take time and they're worth taking time for. Number two, um, people get upset when we're impatient with them. And especially, I think of this specifically with my kids, like not everyone watching this is gonna have kids or relate to this, but like when I rush, my kids push back even harder and they don't want to get out the door as quickly as I would like them to, even more so. So I've learned to slow down and enjoy them in their process of getting ready in the morning. So like the take your, put on your shoes thing with your kids, like I could say that 14 times, or I could say it once, sit down with my daughter and have a moment with her and like, hey, look at you putting your shoes on all by yourself. Look, you did your buckle like that. That was great. And like, she and I can connect in that moment and I'm not rushing, rushing, rushing and causing her to be in a, a state of stress as well. Cause it doesn't, it doesn't make her go faster. Lord knows God gave me that child so that I would learn how to be patient because she is a stop and smell the roses kind of girl. And I need that in my life cause I'm not that way. <laughs> so I'm so, I'm so appreciative that she's my daughter. Hello Piper. Hello. I know. Number three is uh, making mountains out of molehills and if you don't know what that means it just means like a specific topic in your mind or a certain issue can get planted and then it starts to grow and all of a sudden it seems like this tiny little thing that you have to accomplish is huge and it's a big stressor it's a really big stressor and so I have tended to do that in my life I even I had a boss tell me that one time like I was really stressed out and really manic and she's like do you think you're making mountains out of molehills? And that phrase has always stuck with me. And she was probably right. Like the tasks in front of me were not that serious, but because I wanted them done well and I wanted, I was worried about people's perception of me doing well, like having done them, um, it was creating more stress than I needed to. My husband gave this, this very, good little grain of wisdom to me. He said, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. And I guess this is something they said in the military a lot when it just meant like when you make sudden movements, someone can get hurt or someone can get killed. And I, it's kind of harsh to translate into real day life, but I get what he's saying. Like if I just go slow at a task and you know, take my time, it's actually going to take me less time than if I were to rush and try to accomplish, um, multiple things at once and multitask because we all know multitasking doesn't work. And then the last one, you definitely lower your stress when you choose to take your time and not rush. I can just feel it and maybe I'm just more of a type A person this way, but I can feel it when I'm stressed and rushing around like a crazy person. My blood pressure is higher, my pulse is faster, and I don't feel in a state of peace. So since I've started practicing this and trying to go slow, um, I, I realize I'm, I'm able to be happier and I'm able to feel better in my own body. Like I don't feel like my heart's going to burst out of my chest. <laughs> so that's really good. Okay. So last but not least, how on earth 
do we keep from rushing? Because we live in this crazy busy world and how are we gonna accomplish this? Well, I have a few tips for you. Number one, make a plan uh, with some wiggle room. I feel like that's the key. So we can make plans all day long and write, you know, I'm gonna do this at nine o'clock, I'm gonna do this at 10 o'clock, but if you're not giving yourself wiggle room for mishaps to occur or things to come up or kids to have meltdowns, because that is so, that happens, then we're setting ourselves up for failure. And another tip for how to keep from rushing is to get thankful. This is one of my favorite things that I've learned this last year. And it immediately, if I get into a state of stress or in a state of um, like anxiety, I just, I stop and I go, no, 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 no. Cause I know those thoughts are not from God. It's trying to stress me out and that's not helpful to my day. So I just go like, I'm thankful for my family. Thank you God for my kids. Thank you God that I have a house to live in and food to eat. Like, and they're very simple things, but immediately it states or it changes my state of mind. And I, I am able to move forward and crush those, those thoughts of, um, their lies really those thoughts of untruth. And then my last thing is just to give grace to yourself. Like I want to be here to remind you guys, like you were created for a purpose. And I truly believe that God created us to encourage each other. And, and sometimes people's opinions of myself become everything. And so me being a little bit late is, is the fear. <laughs> and that's probably why I rush most times. Cause I'm afraid they're, I'm going to be late. I'm afraid that people are going to think less of me or yeah, I'm afraid that people are going to think less of me and I'm afraid people are going to think I'm incompetent. And the truth is it doesn't matter what people think of you. <laughs> it doesn't matter what people think of me that God, our creator already thinks the world of us. And yeah, and he, he made me for something amazing. He made you for something amazing. And if we can just get behind that and realize like God is for us, he's not mad at us that we don't have to worry about being five minutes late. Granted, if it's like a like a really important appointment or something or like a job interview, you do want to make a good impression and that is important. But I'm talking about the day-to-day -day stuff, like and specifically for moms, this grace we need to give ourselves when our kid has a meltdown and we're five minutes late to a play date. Like, that's okay. I'm so excited to be able to share these tips that I've learned myself with you. I hope they're helpful to you. Most of all, I'm just gonna start Praying that you guys have an amazing week. If you're tuned into this, I, like, I'm like i excited to be able to connect with you this way. Have an amazing week. I can't wait to think about what to share with you next week. I'm always learning, I'm always thinking, I'm always praying, and I just hope you're doing the same. Let's make our life awesome together. And while we do that, let's go get messy, have fun, and learn. I'll see you next time.